afflicted all my life I was tormented sin sin had left me battered battered and wounded I was living I was living yet I was dead I was bruised and afflicted all my life I was tormented sin had left me and wounded I was living yet I was dead oh but Jesus mm, sinking oh and there was no way out, sin had came to me, then he reached out, set me free, now the words Jesus spoke to me, he said my child, I died, that your sins won't have to be. There is a stream flows from Calvary. Go and wash away your sins. Come, follow me. And oh, Jesus, he rescued me. I was sinking. Oh, glory to God. But it took the blood of Christ to set us free. the 
Judges chapter 10, from where the lesson was read. I will not read the entire portion of verses 6 through 15, but look with me to verse 6 and verses 13 through 15. It says, And the children of Israel did evil again. Everybody say evil again. Evil. Yes. Evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ostroth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and served him not. 13 says, Ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee this day. Do anything you want to do to us, but please deliver us. Lord have mercy. That's my theme for today. Lift your hand right hand and say, O oh Lord, oh Lord, we have sinned, we have sinned but, please but please deliver us. Deliver us. Oh, praise God. Please deliver us. 
That's my message. And when this word came into my spirit, it was not even registered then that today or we are in the period of celebrating emancipation and also independence. But we believe that the greatest deliverance, the greatest emancipation that one can ever receive, it comes from the hand of Almighty God. I want to take my time because I'm not even sure how this thing is going to go. But I know God is going to speak to all of us. Amen. Amen. We have sinned. But please deliver us. Now God had said, I'm not going to deliver you anymore. Is that what you found in the text? He said, you have forsaken me. And you have served other gods. And know that you find yourself in trouble again. You are calling to me. Go to the gods whom you have chosen. Let them deliver you. Dear Jesus, I believe that we Jamaicans, and I'm not being disrespectful to any Jamaican, we are wonderful people, but I believe that we Jamaicans are in some ways comparable to the children of Israel. What is it, Pastor? Well, Israel knew what it meant to call on God in the time of trouble. And they also knew what it meant for God to deliver them supernaturally. However, very soon after their mighty deliverance, they went right back into the sinful practices that had led to their bondage and to their servitude. Amen. Unto their enslavement. What kind of people? What irony. God delivers. And before we continue to praise Him and to magnify Him and to serve Him, in spirit and in truth, no sooner than he brought us out, we go right back into the sinful practices. Are you with me? This, I believe, is indeed a description of many of us in Jamaica. Many of us. Because we are a religious people. We are, for the better part, a godly people also. Not just religiosity, but godliness can be found among us. Are you with me? Very religious, very penitent in times of trouble. And even those who are leaders of the land, some who do not call on Almighty God ordinarily, Whenever trouble sets in, they call upon the church saying to us, Call on God on our behalf. So we are a very penitent people, very religious people in time of distress. We pray, we cry to God, we intercede, we weep, we mourn, we supplicate, we go down in sackcloth and ashes, and God has been faithful to us. He has never failed us yet. Roll back the curtains. Just look at where he has brought us from. Are you with me? Touch your neighbor. Tell your neighbor it's a mighty long way. I preached some time ago that it took God much to bring us where we are. Can anybody, amen, ascribe to that statement? It took God much to bring me where I am today. Can you say the very same thing? 
Oh yes, it took God much to bring us where we are today. It's not been like this all the time. Come on, God's people. But we should not go back into bondage. Roll back the curtains of memories now and then. Show me where you brought me from. Where I might have been tonight. God helped us. And as soon as sickness becomes health, we seem to forget that we were sick and called to God and he healed us. As soon as poverty becomes wealth, we forget how poor and miserable we were. And we begin to bite the very hands. Are you not with me that feed us? Dear God, do you know how many people called unto God in times of sickness and said, God, if you heal me, I'll serve you. If you get me out of this hospital bed, I'll find a church. I'll commit my life to you. And host Christians say, God, if you get me out of this, I'll dedicate my life to you. I'll serve you in spirit and in truth. But no sooner than as God delivered us, we forget. God said, be careful. Be careful. Look at what I said to Israel. I told them, having forsaken me and took me for granted, use me for opportunistic reasons, use me out of convenience. God said, I told them, don't look to me again. Go to the gods whom you have chosen. Let them hear you this time around. Are you with me? Hallelujah. God has healed your body. God has turned your life around. He has caused you to blossom, to bloom, to bear. He has caused you to be like a watered garden. Some of us are not very thankful. We even become so ungrateful that we are pop style on God. Are you not with me? Come on. But God says to Israel in Deuteronomy, when your barn is full, when your cattle increase, when wealth, when riches, when prosperity come to you, please remember the Lord thy God, for it is he who hath brought you out of and into. Come on somebody. He brought us out of bondage. And he brings us into the marvelous light. And today things are much better than they were before we came to Jesus. No man come to Jesus and get worse off. If you come to the Lord and serve him in spirit and in truth. And your life is going down. Your life is mashing up something wrong. I would to God some of you would even say amen. Come on somebody. I would to God you would begin to just look where he has brought you from me all of us. And say God I thank you. God I praise you. Hold on. The Holy Ghost is telling me something here. And listen it carefully. Not just God. God is above all. But there are some persons whom the Lord God has used to have been a blessing to some of us. To have been sources of blessing to us. Don't forget them. You're not going to preach with me. Don't forget them. Don't forget those who were, amen, there to minister to you in the times of your distress. 
Because God has never come down in human form outside of the manifestation of Jesus Christ to personally minister to anybody. He uses his servants. And if God has used someone to be a blessing to you, be thankful. Be grateful. Give God thanks for the person. Give God thanks for that vessel that was available and was usable, that was willing to say, here am I, my God, send me, use me. Can you say amen? amen. There, Jesus. I want to say something, I didn't plan it, but it comes to mind. Maybe the Lord wants to use it. A mother of four came to me one day last week poured out some needs financial needs and I sat there wanted to respond I checked my person and I had eight thousand dollars I took out the eight thousand dollars I said there this is what I have on me today I'm gonna give you five and I keep three I gave her the $5,000 and I held the other three in my hand. But when I gave her the five, she started to cry. Just began to cry. Sitting there across the desk looking on me. And I knew it was tears of joy. Are you not with me? I knew she was saying in her spirit, dear God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And she began to cry. And I enjoyed seeing the person cry until I said to myself, I'm going to make her cry some more. <laughs> and I gave her the other $3,000. And that's where crying began. Come on, somebody. Oh, you're, you're not getting the message. She wept and she wept and she wept and she wept. She got up and walked out of the office. I said to her, give God praise. Go give him praise. Go give him praise, lady. Go give him praise. It is an angel of God minister to you. Somebody praise him down there. Has God ever used anybody to be a blessing to you? Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I thank God for you. You might not know your neighbor sitting beside, but tell them, I thank God for you. One day they might be your angel. One day they might be your messenger. One day they might be God's arms extended to you. Thank God for somebody here today. Somebody shout the highest praise. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, let's see if I can stay with the message. The text of Judges chapter 10 shows us a number of things. It shows us how Israel departed from the true and the living God. And they served the seven false gods. In the text in verse 6 you will note the seven false gods that they served. Are you with me? They served Balaam. They, say they served Osteroth. They serve the gods of Syria, the gods of Zidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistine. They departed from the living God and did evil again in the sight of God. Shame on Israel. When you look at what God has done for them, shame on Israel. When you look at 430 years in bondage under the last whip of the pharaohs, their taskmasters, and all the things that they did unto them, and how God miraculously, supernaturally came through for them, divided the Red Sea, dried up the Jordan, defeated many enemies along the way, and now they turned away from Jehovah and served false gods. Shame. And Israel. 
Shame on Jamaicans. Some Jamaicans. Are you not saying anything? We are celebrating the period of emancipation and independence. Thank God for what has happened. But I am not here today saying that all is well. I am still saying, as I have said time and time again, we have departed from the living God. We have departed. Stay with me. And pray with me. Seven false gods. And God declared such practice to be evil. The children of Israel did evil again to serve any other gods or gods besides Jehovah. It's an evil practice. It's an idolatrous practice. It is something that will cause God to be angry. For he said, thou shalt have no other gods but me. Serve the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might. Love him and serve him. Lord, we have sinned, but please deliver us. You know somebody must stand in the gap for Jamaica. Come on, God's people. God said, I'm looking for somebody to stand in the gap. Jeremiah 22, 30, I'm searching for a gap man. Touch somebody and tell them God's looking for a gap person. He's looking for somebody to stand in the gap. Somebody to lay your life on the line. Somebody to say, Lord, I'm going to stay before you until you heal this nation. We have sinned and come short of the glory of Almighty God. Somebody praise Him there. Verse 7 of the text shows us, Amen, that the hunger of the Lord was hot. Everybody say hot. The anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. Idolatry will cause God's hunger to stir against an idolatrous people. And Jamaica have too many idols. Are oh, you not with me? God's hunger was hot against them. God says, I can't deal with this anymore. Because of such idolatrous practices, I am going to turn away from you. And brothers and sisters, if God ever turn away from a people, it's a serious situation. David begged God. He said, David, David said, Lord, please, please, please. I know I have sinned. I know you should back off and leave me. But please, please, take everything from me. Take my house and my lands. Take my wife and my children. Take every earthly possession that I have. But please, lift your hand and say, please. God, I want some sincerity in this house. Please, Jesus. Take not your Holy Spirit from Jamaica. Because any day the Holy Ghost is lifted. God Almighty. If things are like they are now. And so many Holy Ghost Christians are here. So many blood bought Christians are here. So many sanctified people are in Jamaica praying and seeking God and so many demons are loose in this land. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? If there are no more travailing prayer mamas. Can you imagine? If there are no more holiness preachers. Can you imagine? There are no more anointed singing choirs. Can you imagine? What would happen to the land? Dear God Almighty. So David said, don't take your Holy Ghost. Lift your hand and say, don't take the Holy Ghost. Why I feel I'm going to preach a little here today. Don't take the Holy Ghost. Take everything but leave me with the Holy Ghost. Because when I got the 
the Holy Ghost. I got power. I got anointing. I got authority. When I got the Holy Ghost, I can rebuke the enemy. I can enter into the strong man's territory and I can bind him in the name of Jesus when I got the Holy Ghost. Don't take the Holy Ghost. God, somebody help me. Praise God, come on. Oh, let me follow this leading. Why you think the devil is trying to cool up the church and turn the all of us into worldly hands? Are you not preaching with me here? He wants to take the power of the Holy Ghost. Talk to me, somebody. He wants to take the teeth out of the lion's jaw. He wants to take the sting out of the bee. And if you take away the sting, the bee can't sting. Take away the teeth, the lion can't bite. Can I preach to somebody here? Take away the light will be in darkness. Take away the joy will be in sorrow and sadness. We need a Holy Ghost church. We need a blood wash church. We need a born again church. We need a sanctified church that can stand up in the name of Jesus and say silver and gold have I known them, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We can say rise up Jamaica. Rise up Jamaica. Rise up Jamaica. Come out of sin. Come out of immorality. Come out of rebellion. Rise up. Tell somebody it's time to arise. Woo! Come on, somebody. That's why. That's why. I am vexed with anybody who try to bring down God's church. Are you not with me? Sometimes ago, one little misled deacon, one deacon, let me preach. I never say nothing publicly. I'm coming now. I'm coming. I'm coming. One little misled deacon. Come on, somebody. Forget his true position. Forget that he's supposed to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar person. Allow the devil to mess him up. Are you with me? And bring God's church under the light of public scrutiny. And the point I want to get to, a church that's been established for over 43 years, Casting out devils, healing the sick and raising the dead and bringing people to Jesus Christ. No media people never see them until one little human informed deacon bring the church into disrepute. Can I preach here? Come on somebody. And the media came down like hawks. Hawks coming down to devour and some people threatening to close the church but if you touch it God touch you 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 leave the church shake it Bohoya. let me preach in this house hallelujah Jesus said upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell. Shh. Shall not. Hold on. Sit down please. It's not the church did it. It's one deacon. And all of us are not in the same boat. Come on, somebody. In every church, you have good people and bad people. We have some deacon in this church. If they're not sanctified, they do the same thing too. 
And some of us pastors, if we are not sanctified, we mess up same way too. You don't like the way I preach. It's only the blood of Jesus Christ keeps us sanctified, keeps us saved, keeps us holy. That's why we need the Holy Ghost in the church. Lift your hand and say, send the Holy Ghost. Send the power of the Holy Ghost upon Zion. Woo! Everybody, let's come down on the church. Like vultures, sir. God Almighty. Mm. Hold on. You know, we don't condone wrongs. Wrongdoing, we don't. But hold on, man. Mm. Persons must understand <laughs> that the people who are in the church are people who came from out of the world. And although some are in the church, it takes a long time to get the world out of some of us. I've been working on some of you for 23 years now. And until now, I can't get the world out of some of you. Oh, you you're going to leave me now. I've been fasting with you. I've been praying with you. And anointed you. I travailed for you. But until now, after 23 years, I still can't get the world out of some of you. And if the devil fool you and you go out there and do some stupid thing, then they're coming down on the whole of us. <laughs> You're not with me here. Dear God, I got 15 minutes to close. We have sinned, oh God. But have mercy upon us. Please deliver us. Can you say amen? amen. Lift your hand and say deliver us. Amen. Hallelujah. And so because God's anger was hot against them. God delivered them to be vexed. And to be oppressed by the Philistines. And by Ammon. For 18 years. God had them being afflicted because of this sin of idolatry in turning away from God. Tell your neighbor, don't turn, don't turn. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. If you turn, you'll burn. That's your message. If you turn, you'll burn. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The Philistines and Ammon for 18 years oppressed them. Because God is a jealous God. Come on somebody. He's a jealous God. He said, I will not share my glory with anyone else. He said, I am God. Serve me. God don't deal with democracy. He deals with theocracy. Take him or leave him. There is no alternative where God is concerned. In worship is one God. One God. No alternative. Can you say amen? Oh God Almighty. And so when you look between verses 10 through 14. We are in Judges chapter 10. Are you with me? Through verses 10 through 14. It shows that Israel first of all acknowledged their transgression. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam. We have sinned. Lift your hand and say, Lord, we have sinned. Mm -hmm. We've sinned. The sad thing about it, you know, is that most times we have eyes to see other people's sin. 
but we never see our sins. Oh, you're not going to say amen. Dear God Almighty, you have some wonderful people in church, you know. Wonderful. But the only spirit they have, or the spirit that they have, can only discern evil. But the Holy Spirit, he discerns both good and evil. Some folks, all oh, they can see in some of us are evil things. Mm. Now you have a little fault, a little weakness. Dear God, they would break your neck. And at the same time they are, while they strain at a knot, they are swallowing a camel. While they see the moth that is in your eyes and mine, they have no sight to see that there's a huge beam that is in their eyes. Israel said, we have sinned. Jamaicans have sinned and we have turned away from Almighty God and I believe the lash whip that we have been under for a long time now in this country maybe chances are probably it is God's chastised chastisement that is upon us and so we turn back to him are you with me somebody and so they acknowledged their transgression and then God took them back in time saying, look what I did for you. When you read the text, God said, look, look, look what I did for you. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, did not I deliver you from the Egyptians, from the Ammonites, from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines? I delivered you from the Zidonites, also from the Amalekites. I deliver you from Moab. I deliver you from all of those enemies seven times. I delivered you. Do you not remember what I did for you? Tell somebody, please remember how we brought you out. Dear God of heaven. Mm. Don't go back brothers do not go back sisters be like sister Ruth said I'm not going back entreat me not to leave thee not to return from following thee where you go I go where you live I live I said to one of my wonderful brethren the other day I say, you must have the faith of Job. Pastor, you're telling me to be like Job? I said, no. You must possess the kind of faith that Job possessed. That should situations work against you, you still maintain your faith. Are you with me, somebody? Hallelujah. You should say, even if he slay me, I'm going to trust him. All my appointed time, I'm going to wait until my change come. Tell somebody, change will come. Change will come. You don't have to go back to the boyfriend for financial support. Because he's going to tell you nothing for nothing. You don't have to go back to the girlfriend for comfort because you know what it you will end up into. Are you with me? Don't let the devil tempt you. Well, he will tempt, but do not yield to the devil's temptation. You are going to suffer, suffer as a child of God. That's what Peter says. Don't suffer as a thief. Don't suffer as a busybody in other people's business. Are you not with me here? But if you suffer as a Christian, be not ashamed. Glorify God even in your suffering. Oh, glory to God. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared 
with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Don't go back. Can you say amen? amen. Do not go back from whence God has delivered you. Let me hasten on to close. God says in verse 6, you serve seven false gods. In verse 11 into 12, God says, I delivered you seven times. Come on, somebody. Seven times. And yet, you have forsaken me. Yet you have forsaken me and serve other gods. Wherefore, now that you are in trouble, the eighth time, God says, I will deliver you no more. God threatened them and said, I'm going to back off and leave you. Or some of you are not saying anything. I'm going to back off and leave you, Israel. Because you take this thing for joke. You think we are playing up, up scotch. Run out and run in. Come on, somebody. God said, this time around, you're on your own. You're on your own. The gods whom you have chosen. Let, let's read it, verse 14. What it says. Go and cry unto the gods which he have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation be careful who you choose as God be careful what you choose as God are you not with me here because when your back is against the wall them things can't help you let me go a little deeper be careful who you choose as prayer partners because some of them really just looking a little companionship. And they don't know nothing about being a prayer partner. Oh, I'm going to say something that I should not say. So why are you going to say, Pastor? I've had some person came to me. Several, several. Not you I'm talking, brother. Not you, sister. Holy for people. Pastor, I, I, I know this is the Lord for us to get married. I said, how did you, how you met? Well, we became prayer partners. And we started visiting with each other. Praying on the telephone. And oh, pastor, we just know that this is the Lord. Well, I'm not saying it's not the Lord. But I know for sure that sometimes it's not the Lord. Your flesh just happened to get a hold of the other person. Are you not with me here? Oh, why did I say that? And I got some folks to be married who told me just that. Some times ago. You got to be careful. Come on, somebody. Make sure those whom you choose are those who choose you as prayer partners. In time of your distress, they can really get a prayer through. Are you not with me? God says, I'm not going to deliver you this time around. Go look for the gods whom you choose. Go call them up. Elijah told 450, maybe 500 people, 450. Elijah said, call on your God. You declare Baal to be God. Call on him. Let him send down fire. Let him consume the sacrifice on the altar. No matches struck. No oil. Nothing. Let your God send fire. They called from morning until evening set. Baal could not move a muscle. Are oh, you not with me? Elijah then say, give me a chance. Let me now call on Jehovah. 
But before I call, let's dismantle this idolatrous altar. Rebuild the altar. Repair the altar. Talk to me here, somebody. Pour water on the sacrifice. And let me call to the God who is a flaming fire. Oh, glory. God, somebody help me. Praise him here. I'm coming through. I'm coming through. I'm coming down. Give me just ten more minutes, the very most, and I'll be through. Elijah calls unto the God of heaven, and a fire descended. Talk to me, somebody. Lord have mercy. Boy, I want to preach some things here. But some people out there go mad with me. Some of you better be careful the church you hang out with. You better be careful. Don't hang out with church. Don't have the anointing. You must hang out with a place where the anointing is. Because it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. You are not just looking for a social gathering. You are not just looking for smooth words and pleasant talk. You are looking for a place where the anointing is. Hallelujah! When demons and devils rise up against you, pretty talk can deliver you. Scholarship can deliver you. Theology can deliver you. Oh, glory. Somebody better praise God here. When demons and devils rise up, worldly church can deliver you. Because they don't have the anointing, leave me, let me preach. You better come out from among them. Find the anointing. If the anointing is on that tree, that's where you better be. Than in any cathedral, than in any power theater, any such place. If the anointing is not there, you don't want to be there. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want a church that live Holy Ghost. Talk Holy Ghost. Walk Holy Ghost. Sleep Holy Ghost. Some of you not saying anything. Because you love, the, you love the dead religion. It don't change nothing about you. You still walk like the world. You still talk like the world. You still live like the world. All you know you got your name on the church's roll. You better get your name written. In the Lamb's book of life. Where it matters most. You don't want me preach. But I come to tell you we have sinned. And God said if we continue to sin, he might just back off and leave us. Anybody going to leave me? They must leave me with my anointing. Every single person in this house here you met me with my anointing. Everybody, including my dear wife. On any day she say, I can't take this holiness preacher anymore. I can't take this husband anymore. I'm going to find me a dignified man. And I'm going to leave you, man. I say, honey, that's your choice. You're free to make your choice. But you're not going to take my anointing from me. Nobody going to take my anointing. You find me with it, leave me with it. Because as long as I have the anointing, I will live. I will drink. I will curse the devil. I will lay hands on the sick. And I will make it to heaven. Somebody lay your hands on the person and say, anoint him, Jesus. Lay your hand on somebody beside you. If you got the anointing, touch somebody and say, anoint them. Hallelujah! Give me Holy Ghost in the morning. Holy Ghost in the evening. Holy Ghost when the sun goes down. Whoa! Don't take him, don't take him, don't take him. Jesus. 
Lord, we have sinned. But have mercy on us. Please, Lord, deliver us. Everybody said, deliver us, O Lord. Please deliver us. The prayer of David in Psalm 51 is most appropriate for most, if not for every adult Jamaican. Psalm 51. Read it when you get some time. Are you not with me here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have sinned. And God is very hungry. His judgment is threatened. And will only be averted through genuine repentance. Genuine repentance. Let me get in bigger trouble. Bigger trouble. Let political leaders on both sides of the fence say what they want to say. Tell them, say, I say it is righteousness that exalts a nation. And sin is a reproach unto any people. Tell your party, I say so. Tell the other party, I say so. Sin is a reproach unto any man. Are you not with me here? Political time coming around, we are told. And some of you might be getting ready to buy your green, your blue t-shirt. Is it blue or green? You saw, you know? Yeah, man. You have yours already well put on. You're getting ready to buy your green t-shirt. Or getting ready to buy your yellow t-shirt. But no green t-shirt can deliver you. No yellow t-shirt can deliver you. Join me at an old-fashioned altar where we call for fasting and prayer and say, Consecrate me now to your service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Lift your hand and say, Draw me nearer. Say, Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Draw parliament nearer. Draw senators nearer. Draw the prime minister nearer. Draw opposition leader nearer. Draw candidates nearer. You better help me preach and close this message. Because we have sinned. And Jamaica House can't cleanse sin. God knows can't cleanse sin. Parliament can't cleanse sin. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Lift your hand and say the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Only the blood of Jesus. Woo! Dear God, we have sinned. And when God told Israel that, Israel said, God, oh no. Oh no. Look at verse 15, I'm on Judges chapter 10. I'm closing, please. What oh, them say, God? Oh no. They say, God, we know you are mad with us. We know you're hungry with us. Please, God. Anything you want to do with us, do it. Chastise us if you want to chastise us. Rebuke us if you want to rebuke us. Anything you want to do, do it to us. But please, no other gods cannot deliver us. Lift your hand and say, please. Say it again. Please. One more time. Please. Anything you want to do, do it to us. But one thing we beg you, one thing we beg you. Jesus, Jesus. One thing we ask of you, when you get you chastising, when you get you rebuking, when you get you reproving, 
when you get through chasing us, please, I say please, we beg you, please, please, deliver us. Minister Miller, we beg him, please. Because in our stupidity, we turned away from him. In our stupidity, we went after other gods. Please, Lord, deliver us in this nation. Deliver us from gunmen. Please. Are oh, you not with me? Please deliver us from gunmen. Security forces can't control them. Please deliver us. Great respect to the work of the security forces, but please deliver the gunmen so that we be delivered from gunmen. They cannot be del delivered in GP and Spanish Town and the other prisons. They cannot be delivered because of handcuff and black walls around them. Visit them in their Holy Ghost. Visit them in their secret corners. Oh, you're not coming with me? The more you back off is the longer I preach. Let me stop. Deliver us from gunmen. Deliver us from drugs, men. Drugs! That's caused some of the crime and violence in Jamaica. Deliver us from drug peddlers and pushers. You're not with me? Deliver us from dawn men. Too many dons. Running corners. Controlling people's lives. Lift your hand and say, Deliver us. Deliver us from rapists. Rapists. While major crimes have trended down, rape and carnal abuse is on the rise. Deliver us from rapists. Deliver us from pedophiles. Men who pray on little children, abusing them. Deliver us from incest. Are you not with me? Incest in the home incest in the family and some oh no oh no some mothers because they want to keep secure the bread that the boyfriend the baby father the husband bring home they know that their daughters are being molested and they turn a blind eye Deliver us from rapists and pedophiles. Nobody preaching these things. Are you not with me? Uh huh? Deliver us. We have sinned. Deliver us from sexual predators of every sort. You don't read your paper. Grown women are going into the high schools. And recruiting girls to train them into lesbian practices. Sexual predators of every sort. You're not with me? Yes. Jude found a house in a particular area. A house in another area. Several high school girls practicing lesbianism. And when it's not that, several girls and boys doing all kinds of sexual immoralities deliver the nation. Deliver the nation. Come choir, bring me down, bring me down. Three more minutes, bring me down please. Deliver us. We have sinned. And some of you don't want the church to see right. So we can cry out against sin and wickedness. Some of you want us to get cold like ashes and let dog come sit down in there. 
because some of you sit down and feel so comfortable and know that your heart is not right you better don't leave this church is this one going to set you right to make you ready for heaven come on you go to some place where nothing bothers your conscience you live like the devil and shout like angel but ain't no word to correct you that's not where you want to be or you're not saying anything deliver us sexual predators may preach it loud because in the church people in the church hiding out see where one deacon caused the entire Christian community one deacon you're not saying anything. Shh. Hallelujah. Lift your hand and say, please deliver us. Mm. Deliver us, Lord. Our land is in trouble. We have sinned. Stand with me, please. Deliver some preachers. Because some of us are under bondage. Deliver some preachers. Lift your hand and say, Deliver, Lord. Deliver preachers. Some of us need deliverance. Deliver some policemen. Because some of them in corruption. Perverting the course of natural justice. Deliver them, Jesus. What kind of preacher is this? Deliver us. We have sinned. Come short of your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deliver everybody. Lift your hand in his presence. And say, please, Lord. Deliver us. Come on. <laughs> Mm. my brother you are from North Carolina United States of America America needs to be delivered also the threats of all kinds of activities all across the world we need deliverance hallelujah anybody here know that you need deliverance from sin from whatever it is I preach a whole lot of things here today and if you need deliverance for anything at all said or not said hallelujah Lord take me back to the place where I found you it's been so hard trying to make it on my own. Lord, I need your direction just to make the right selection. You gotta sing, oh, I sing. Oh! 
Everybody pray, everybody pray, everybody pray, everybody pray. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We give a praise. We worship you this morning. Oh, God, have been so good. Be merciful one more time, Holy Ghost. Great God, we have sinned against you, Lord. We have sinned. We have sinned east, north, west, south. But oh God, in the clean word is not your will that none should perish. And even this morning, oh God, we come, oh God, bending knee. We come with our wrist, oh God, again today. Amen. A broken and a conscious of heart. Even this morning, Jesus, you know your people, Lord. You have seen the cry. You have heard the cry. You have seen the many tears, oh God, this morning. But I pray, Jesus, right now, as I come now, oh God, to deliver, Lord, you told Moses, take up thy shoes, oh God, from up thy feet, for the place you stand at the holy ground. Hey, we are standing on the holy ground this morning. Great God Almighty, I pray you will visit this morning with us. Let the Holy Ghost touch right now. My God, come to us, somebody here this morning. Oh God, I know the heart, you know the crying, you know the groaning within our spirit. Even today, God, come down. Touch down right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you love us a key this morning. You rather know that should perish, but all shall come to repentance. We come this morning. We can cry this morning, have a father. We ask this morning, oh God, you know the hunger hearts, you know the longing right now to feel a joy, to feel a peace right now that will abide in somebody's heart. I pray you are saved by your mighty power in the name of Jesus Christ that I will reign this morning. My God, take pre evidence of somebody's heart today. I pray you will lose that man. Oh God, I know you know Jesus. You know everyone this morning. Right now, Lord, touch right now. Save by your mighty power, Lord. Amen. I pray this morning, Lord, oh God, and know the way that we should take. Oh God, we are like, oh God, sheep. I've gone astray. We have 
turned of a wonder. We have turned of a wonder. We have turned into a mess. We have turned, oh God, no wickedness. We have turned to corruption. Lord, I say, have no that God. You are a jealous God. Even this morning, oh God. I said, the whole is sick. My God is a soreness. But I pray we'll come back to repentance. You say, my people shall call by your name and humble. We need to humble, Lord, and turn to you this morning. Oh God, help us to turn. Help us to look this morning. The living God, the Holy One of Israel, who never slum and our sleep. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, touch this morning. Oh God, open your hands of mercy, Lord. They are soul to be rescued. They are soul to be saved. Even this morning, oh God, I ask you right now, I beg of you, come down and touch and save. Even this morning, oh God, as you commit everything, everyone in your hand, we pray for a mighty move. We pray for a shaking this morning. We pray, oh God, for revival. Revive, we pray this morning. Oh God, save. Save before it's too late. We ask his mercy. We tell the thanks. Amen. Lift up your hands and give him praise, everybody. Come on. Come on, give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Return to the Lord. God bless you. Go back to your seat singing. I have won dirt far away from God. Now I have come, come in heart of sin. Oh, sin, the Lord. Oh, yeah, Lord, I am coming home. Yes, I am coming. Let me help. 